Hi, hope you are doing well. Today we will going to discuss about debouncing and where and how you can use debounce time operator from RxJS. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristic. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithm. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. Debouncing is a pretty famous or widely used concept in web development means in the front end development. And what it means is as the name says the debounce means if you want to execute a function or execute an action and you will debounce that action if another similar action came into the picture with a specified amount of time like right? with a specified given amount of time so first we're going to see how you can implement of your own then we're going to use our debounce time operator from rxjs we have already used the debounce time operator in our switch map video so if you haven't watched switch map video you can watch that one i will link in the card so that it the switch map will be clear and today we're going to discuss how you can implement your own and what is happening behind the scene so first we will write the code then i will explain you in the diagram suppose on change of a uh, input field you are calling your server to fetch some data so think that scenario okay so i'll just uh, give the name as a send data and what i'm going to do this can be achieved in various ways so you can use a closure in javascript i will just uh, use this dot timer so i have a variable that is called timer or you can call it debounce or anything so here we'll put the set timeout and i will let you know everything why why i am putting the set timeout in the set timeout what we'll do i'll just console log the value but here in in your real case you will going to call your server so we'll just get the value here and I'll just print in the value. Now the main debouncing effect will come. We'll clear the timeout by using this timer. Okay. So this start timer will pass to the clear timeout method. So I'll just explain you what's happening here. So whenever our send data method get called, at that time we will going to raise a timeout event and we'll push that to our queue so this is how event loop works so you have you have two queues and one uh, in browser two queues and one call stack so for first your set timeout promises request animation frame those are interval set interval those kind of uh, execution or the block of code will go to your queue first when your main stack is finished then it will again fetch from the uh, queue and it start execute that time okay what we're doing is we are putting this on a queue and we are giving as a 500 millisecond as the timer for for that set timeout operation the thing like if you call this method before this 500 millisecond so that's what debouncing is so if you just uh, put a value and if you call uh, call that same execution or same method before a provided amount of time then what it will going to it will going to clear the timeout and we are passing the reference of that set timeout so it will going to fetch that reference it will going to remove that from the queue and at that time we don't have any execution now okay once it get removed at this time so whenever the code will come to this point so if you put a breakpoint here so whenever the code will stop here at that time we don't have any execution of this console.log now what will happen is again this will going to create a new event on the queue and it will going to register so, so suppose you are calling your server here or or any any action you are taking so that will going to be registered here so we'll see that i will just go to the code here the html and here we can put our ng model change and we'll just i'll just call send data and i'll pass the event Okay, I on that that I, I'll just type one letter and you can see that D got uh, locked. Now I'll try to write multiple times, but we are calling the method on change. So what happened here is on every change as I press the key before 500 milliseconds so that this get called before 500 milliseconds. So, so, so when I press D, 
I will I'll just show you again. So I'll just delete everything. So I will just press S again. So here what happened is when I pressed S, this get called. And at that time, it cleared the previous one. So it, do, it don't have anything because that is already executed. Now it go ahead and insert that to the queue. And again, after 500 millisecond, it adds one no task on the on our main task, main, main, main call stack, when it fetch from that and executed that console log. But think here, like uh, here, I'll just press something else. And now if you see, I'm pressing, but it is happening. Okay, I just uh, pause for 500 millisecond. So it is happening before 500 milliseconds. So it's going to this method and clearing the timeout and that's what the reason we are not getting the log on every change. So that's what uh, happening uh, in this code. So now we'll go to our diagram and I will try to explain you the concept. So this is our event loop. This is not the accurate event loop. The think like we have a queue, we have a stack. Actually we have two queues, one for micro task and one is for task. And uh, if you want to see a little like what is the difference between promises and set timeout, I have a video. I will link in the card. You can go and check that one. So I had explained it a little bit similar there as well, but there is little more difference between the set timeout and, and promises. Okay, so think like you have a set timeout the block of code. So this is suppose once you call the method here. And it, it, it went inside and it just registered a method for 500 milliseconds. So think like this is your method. Okay. So first what the, your browser will do as it's inside a set timeout. So it will going to push this to the queue as nothing is there in here. So what our event loop is going to do and this event loop will keep on like rotating. That's why it's a loop. So it keep on executing forever okay so what it will do it will just pull that task from from the queue and it will going to put it in the stack okay so now your task is here and again once it will go to that call stack then from the stack it will it will try to fetch that value and it will execute and what happening here is we are using clear timeout so think like we have a uh, mechanism called clear timeout which will going to erase uh, your your block of timeout code if you if you give give the reference of that okay so what we did is if you see this same thing it went into inside and this this will be wait for 500 millisecond so when you call this set the clear timeout and you pass this reference so as the edit stack if you pass this reference to clear, clear timeout, it will going to erase this one and now nothing is inside the code. Okay, now this is this is gone. So if, if as this is a reference, so if you delete that one, this one will, will also be also be gone and everything is gone. But what we are doing is we are calling this set timeout again to be inserted. So it will again going to create a block and we're going to insert the data and same again will going to happen here it will going to come here but if you are not calling the clear timeout again then it will be pop out from your stack then this block will be executed and it will got your console log okay so this is what happening in the browser and this is what a debouncing each and if i try to simplify it like uh, for a for a simple point of view you you catch an event okay and if you call it before uh, a specified time you delete that or you erase that that's the basic thing but this is what happening inside the loop and this is why we are able to achieve our debouncing so if if there is no concept of event loop means the call stack and the queue then it will be pretty hard to achieve it. Now we'll see how you can use your debounce time operator and it's damaging. So uh, we have the code. So I'll just uncomment this one. So this is the same code we have used in our uh, switch map video. If you can see we have using switch map here. I'll just go ahead and save this one. I'll just go ahead and remove this code. And I will use the form control, form control, and our control name was such controller. Okay, so this these this two things I have created. So it it you will be clear if you watch that video. I'll just comment the uh, switch map here. 
okay so we'll just concentrate on dewarms time here you will be clear on the switch map video just go and watch that one if you want to learn switch map so here i'll just try to type s you will see after one second it's coming okay that's the that's the region we have put one second at dewarms time so it will, it will wait till one second at the same time so this all thing is handled by one one line code one line operator that's why rxjs is pretty awesome so if i'll go again here not here if i'll go again and i'll just try to write some value you can see nothing is getting repeated once i waited for some time that's what happening so obviously you're not going to log you're going to make a call or you pipe with like the switch map we are doing here and inside the instead of using interval going to make a call to the server so that's what you will do in your real application so this is what debouncing and debounce time operator is and where you can use it so please like the video if you are liking the video till now and please do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss the future video and please share this video among your friends family colleague and please give some valuable comment any question any suggestion in the comment section below and watch this video to get more about programming and web development and we are going to meet in the next video till that stay happy bye bye